<laughs> when did you kiss? First kiss. It was that night. Don't you forget your queen. This is look very good, hey. She's f***ing doing it. You guys want? Ever. I'm sorry, Frank. I don't understand where the tears were coming from. It's surprising that you have Jack and Tori and people barely say a word about them. All the focus is based on... The, all the focus is based on Jono and Ellie. Oh my God. And I have to give Lauren a lot of credit. I have to give Lauren a lot of credit because she was able to sort of compose herself and not sort of bite every time uh, Ellie and Jono tried to sort of get a reaction from her. And for Ellie and Jono, I can't wait for that relationship to break down. I can't. I know it's only a matter of time because they're too too spiteful and too mean-spirited for that to be a successful relationship. That's just my opinion. But anyway, I digress. Hey there. Thanks for stopping by. It's your girl, Valerie. Welcome to my channel. I'm so sorry about my late reviews. I was traveling. So if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Click the like button. Turn on the notification for when I upload new videos. Definitely share and leave a comment comment in this episode i'll be reviewing married at first sight australia season 11 episode 37 i'm not going to lie given how toxic chaotic and downright upsetting it was at times this season of married at first sight has actually been enjoyable to watch so i've really enjoyed that and so hey it is what it is um so you have all the remaining you know four couples showing up you have ridge and jade and they're in a good place i know there have been rumors about ridge and uh someone put a comment um about ridge and his relationships and stuff and because i don't have facts I don't want to give an opinion unless he comes out and he says something or unless Jade comes out and says something, then I might do a, just a small video to give my opinion about that. But they seem to be in a very good place. And I don't get why people from Australian Married at First Sight this season really love those little moustaches. I, I have no idea. Because you have Ridge with his little moustache and then you have uh, Jaden and his little moustache and it's like, oh my God, oh my God, can somebody just come and just, you know, shave them off um they seem to be in a good place they seem to be happy ridge is talking about moving to live with jade or be closer to jade within two months and so it sounds like a good idea but then with the rumors i don't know how to feel about that i thought they were one of the strongest if not the strongest couple of the season so it is upsetting hearing about everything that's going on around you have eden and jaden they seem to be in a good place and it's surprising I think I said this before, I'll say this again. Eden's sort of anxiety was more sort of, she overplayed it. She overplayed it. She, it was more exaggerated in certain situations. That's my opinion. She gives me the same vibes as the one who was giving premonitions because it seems after she was afraid that people would confront them about their relationship or the Sarah incident, she's now back to normal. She's back to enjoying going to dinner parties. She's not worried. She's not talking about the fact that she's so anxious and she, she's worried about what people will say. I don't get that. I really don't get that. Uh, you have Tori and Jack. Tori and Jack for me, uh, a funny one. I don't get why they were still together. I know someone in the comments said that Tori is pregnant, even though I think I saw something on Twitter with Jack saying, no, she's not. But because I don't have facts, I don't want to say yes or no to that. I still think that relationship is toxic. I think they've trauma bonded and they've decided to give this a go just to stick one to everyone and sort of rub it in everybody else's faces to say we're still together. Jack gave the impression that they had sex. They hadn't seen each other for a bit because, the, you know, it's long distance distance and Tori the, uh, the way she was giddy and all it's like girl please settle down he's not he's not the price he's not the price uh, you have Sarah and Tim Sarah and Tim I don't know why they're still married I really don't because I think Sarah was just there to repair her reputation and that was it after the cheating scandal they seem happy I just like mm, I don't get it I really don't get it I think they broke up or I think I saw a clip of Tim with somebody else somewhere on social media but I I can't sort of say anything because I didn't sadly save the the, the video so uh, I won't be commenting on that you have everybody else getting ready everybody seems to be happy and excited to be going to the dinner party um obviously you have colin colin is ecstatic and he still got his one word answers and it's like oh my god make it stop make it stop um you have lucinda and timothy timothy is excited he really is excited to see lucinda i remember saying that they, they would 
you know, she was the best thing to happen to him and she was something, someone he needed, even though he didn't realize it. So the fact that he's looking forward to seeing her and she says that they speak at least three times a week is amazing. It really is amazing for them. And I think they've created this bunch and friendship that Tim really needed because he felt like he was all alone in the world. So the idea that he's finally found some someone who's willing to sort of go all out and someone who's excited to speak to him someone who's excited to see him that is amazing i love that for them um and timothy mentions that he's looking forward to seeing you know one of the charlie's angels lauren because they created a very good friendship with lauren and sarah and so he was able to sort of you know bond with them over their dislike for zach i think that's the thing that bonded them the most so they're both looking forward to the dinner party and then you have Jono having a conversation and sort of with ellie in the car i don't get it i really don't get it the fact that he's saying oh i had to slay a dragon and you had to kiss a frog for us to be together and it's like please make it stop please sit down somewhere we've seen this before i remember on the last season we had you know uh that couple that decided to match up after the girl broke up with her her husband and so for me i don't get it i really don't get it and i don't see this lasting they might make it last just to spy people but there's nothing about them that shows that they're madly in love they're more interested in how everyone else is going to feel about their connection oh i forgot to say what does Jack mean that they're now boyfriend and girlfriend? They're married. So how did they go from married to boyfriend and girlfriend? Make it make sense. So the dinner party starts and it's like, oh, here comes the drama. And the producers, I think, wanted to say set the tone because they started off with Lucinda. Lucinda is always a calming force. So she, she was happy to be there. She enjoyed herself. She had an amazing time. And then you have Eden and Jaden arrive next. They seem very happy. And surprisingly, Jay Eden is very relaxed. She's way too relaxed for my liking, given the fact that, you know, there's going to be drama and how she behaved in some of the dinner parties. But hey, I digress. Um, you then have Tristan arrive in his red suit and he's talking about the fact that, you know, if not for Cassie, he would not be the man that he is. And I have to second that. I have to second that because he needed it to grow to be the man that he is. I don't know whether he would be her husband i think he taught her about qualities that she would look for in a partner and i think he also learned the same um so it's nice to hear that they still talk and they're in a good place lucinda talks about the fact that you know she and tim are still good friends they're still in a very good place they talk almost three times a week as she said before and when tim arrives because he's the one who arrives next you can see lucinda is ecstatic because she runs to see him even the experts are happy to see him everyone seems happy to really see tim and so that's good for him i think he's managed to find his own sort of people or his own family for someone who was alone in the world that's cute to see next up is um next is lauren and lauren is feeling some type of way obviously because she's not aware that jono and ali are dating but she's more ups and she really wasn't upset about the text message she was upset about the fact that he lied which anyone would feel that type of way and the fact that they i still feel she's upset about the text messages because there were way too many text messages there were way too many text messages so i think she's still she's upset about the text messages even though she doesn't want to acknowledge that um, next up comes Cass and then it's Andy and it's good to see, you know, people s seem very happy to be there and they seem very cordial. Well, for now, for now, the drama is coming. It's sad to see Richie come in and sort of hear in his confessional that he was matched with someone he really liked, but sadly things didn't work out. I know he had, you know, his habits that he needed to break and sadly and he didn't have the patience for that or she didn't have the patience to hang around and sort of watch him do the work i wish she'd actually put in more work but i think the moment he made the comments she checked out and that was it um and so i don't know and i don't get Jaden sort of talking about sarah and tim's relationship and it's like Jaden, mind your own business and it's like Jaden, please keep quiet because we barely know what's going on and uh, that's sort of factual about your relationship because every time something came up Eden would throw a fit and immediately the conversation would be stopped so please stop looking at other people's relationships and stop trying to distract from your the shortcomings in your relationship by you know throwing Tim and Sarah under the bus I don't like that and you could see that 
Timothy wasn't happy. Even Lauren wasn't happy when it was said, you know, oh, Jono was busy saying that Tim wishes he had left Sarah at the altar. Yes, we all think that he should have done that, but it's not, you know, Jaden's place to say. It's not his, his, you know, his relationship to try and sort of analyze. I think he should focus on his own relationship and leave other couples alone. That's just my opinion. It's interesting that once Sarah and uh, Tim come in, everybody just starts piling in. You know, you have Colin come in, you have Ben, and it's very awkward and very uncomfortable. And it's just like, oh my God, why didn't they just open the door and just let the whole group walk in instead of making some people come in and then it'd be awkward because nobody recognizes them and all that. Jade and Reed seem happy. That's all I'm going to say. Um, the other couples are saying, or the other participants are saying they look madly in love. And it's like, well, that's not what the blogs are saying, but hey, it is what it is. Collins, oh my God. The way he was talking, the, when he was talking to Natalie, and it's like, the producers really enjoy, really enjoy making a caricature of someone. And with people like Ridge and Collins, they, you know, it's easy pickings for them because they can manipulate them into whatever they want. They can over pick on something and just over exaggerate it. So, oh my God, that was miserable. Um, And then last to arrive was Tori and Zach because everyone was questioning whether they were still together. So they are arrive um and if could it be more tense i don't think so could it be more awkward i don't think so and you could see that nobody seemed happy to see them the, the other couples really or the other participants didn't really seem that impressed there was no noise there was no jumping up and down um and surprisingly you had tori sit with michael of all the people in the experiment out of expected her to have made amends with her friends unless she still feels some type of way about her friends sort of trying to sort of open her eyes to who her husband was and she decided to stick by him to spite them um everybody's not buying what they're selling everybody's not buying what they're selling because even michael asks tori so are the two of you going to stay long distance or is someone going to move closer and tori sort of saying yeah i'll be moving to the gold coast and you could see that michael wasn't impressed you could see he wasn't impressed and for jack to be saying where's my wife where's my wife it's like oh my god make it stop make it stop we really don't want to see this um and then so Michael was flirting with Stephen and it's like, nah, Stephen treated you badly. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. You really don't need to be wasting your time with this man. I think you need to move on and try other things. Um, but hey, that's just my opinion. Um, and then everybody realizes that, you know, the, the remaining couple is ellie and jono they're the last people to arrive and you can tell that the producers are saving them for the drama they want everybody to see their arrival and have a reaction to it that's just my opinion if you looked up the word awkward uncomfortable embarrassing humiliating you'd see the moment that ellie and jono walk in that would be the definition of that because Everyone was sat there. And for Tori, who has an issue with Lauren, to sit next to Lauren and not approve of what's going on with Ellie and Jono says a lot. Says a lot. You could tell the majority of the people were Tim were Tim Lauren in this situation. Even Ben sat next to Lauren. And when they walked in, it was only I I I think it was Andre and Michael who walked up to actually greet Ellie and Jono. And they say he he thought protest the loudest is fibbing and they are fibbing because they keep telling everyone oh we're so happy we're so happy and it's like you don't need to tell people you're happy people need to just witness and see the glow and see the happiness the fact that they kept kissing and lauren was right to say even if jono doesn't like me he should have given me a heads up just to say i will be coming with ellie just to give you a heads up just so you know i think he didn't want to do that because he felt that everyone would be ready to pounce on ellie and not realizing that people just have lost all respect especially given the fact that when ben was treating ellie like crap you had tori lauren and sarah speaking up for for ellie up until she suddenly magically found her voice i think the moment she found her voice is the moment they decided to start dating with jono because i kept saying in my reviews why has she suddenly found her voice when she was struggling to find her voice all along where did her voice come from and so for them to sit down and be kissing everybody you could tell was uncomfortable and i'm waiting for Jaden to say something because if he has an opinion about sarah and tim he should have an opinion about jono and ellie 
the double standard needs to stop he needs to have the same you need to hold him to account the same one cheated yes the other one we're not sure 100 percent what happened but it looks like they cheated so he needs to you know judge them the same he can't just be judging sarah and leaving ellie and jonah to get away with it no he needs to say something and we need to hear it and i'll be here for that and even if jack of all people to say this is not it <laughs> says a lot Jack to disapprove says a lot. I think what happened is, here's my opinion. I think Jono went back to Ellie and told her that, oh, I've had to own up that you and I, you know, were chatting because we, I was called out by Sarah. And I said, you know, you started it. And I think Ellie said, no, you have to go and correct that and say you are the one who started this thing. And so he came back and corrected it and then tried to pin the blame on Lauren as to why he decided to look elsewhere. Because he said, you know, even in his confessional, he says, oh, it was worth thrall uh, crawling through hell on, on broken glass just to find this amazing woman. You know, Ellie's an amazing, beautiful woman. Lauren is not. And it's like, uh, I'm here. When they break up, please, somebody remind me. I need to do a review on their relationship because has anyone ever watched or heard about something and uh, been then waiting for the downfall and this is what i'm waiting for i'm waiting for the down downfall of jono and ali because it's going to be amazing to watch and it's going to be sad at the same time i i know i empathize i shouldn't empathize because you can tell that everyone at the dinner table is not happy lucinda decides to bring up you know that let's have a conversation this is the elephant in the room we need to address this and we need to move on because you could tell lauren had had told everyone that she was going to try and be quiet and she was going to try not to be reactive and you have jono and ellie kissing and oh i'm so happy i'm so happy i think they expected lauren to go off the moment they walked in and because she didn't react this is why they're sort of shocked and they don't know what to do and they're trying to sort of trying to poke the bear to see if they can sort of get a reaction from her and she keeps trying to be the bigger person and so for ellie to come out and say oh lauren are you hurt and it's like hurt by what by what buddy by what you think you've won if jono can treat lauren the way he's treating her how do you think he's going to treat you how do you think he's going to treat you when he's done with you? This shows that, you know, as much as Tori and Jack were the villains in this season, Jono and Ellie are, are right up there with them. They're right up there with them. They're matched. Um, and the only difference, I think, is in this relationship, Jono is the Tori and Ellie is the Jack because of how she's being, because of how she's being vindictive and malicious and some of the comments that she's making and because she's got you know the sweet innocent face oh she's the victim lauren is the aggressor when lauren is not lauren has tried her best to contain herself but you have other people speaking up for her and it says a lot when you even have jack asking when did this relationship start when did the two of you have your first kiss we all know jack cannot stand lauren but for him to start questioning this relationship and whether or not it's genuine says a lot it says a lot a tory can't stand lauren because lauren held their relationship to a mirror but she herself is saying this is not it and so to only have someone like michael be the person that is sort of accepting of the two of them and everybody else seems to sort of want to sort of wash their hands off and sort of stand as far away from the drama as possible i don't get what ellie and jono cannot see i don't get it here's what i have to say ellie and jono are two idiots who've decided to uh, hype each other stupid I'm sorry, I don't know them as people and I don't like to say negative things about people, but this is how I feel because of the fact that they came in wanting a reaction from Lauren. And when Lauren didn't give them the reaction, they kept talking about how happy and how um, amazing their relationship is uh, up until Lauren had to say something because she was fed up she had reached her limit and jono to say oh you you're not ha you're not upset oh why is everybody empathizing i think they expected everybody to celebrate their couple i think they expected everybody to turn against lauren so when the tide when they walked in and the tide didn't sort of sway their way this is why they tried to paint lauren as the villain and when lauren didn't bite and they realized that everybody was actually empathizing and was on lauren's side they started to sort of try to sort of break lauren down oh she didn't like me she's acting you know she said i was a dog well if she called you a dog why then did you go and see her after her surgical procedure why then did you have sex with her after she called you a dog 
why would you want to, to, to continue a relationship with someone who's being derogatory towards you and someone who's saying some of the meanest things about you? Make that make sense? That doesn't make sense. And I am happy that, you know, Lauren was able to speak up for herself and with everybody sort of holding their feet to the fire... And for Ellie to say, oh, you know, I was just talking, we, it was very innocent, our chats were innocent, I even told Ben, I think she expected Ben to sort of buy into whatever she was trying to sell. And so for Ben to say, no, you said that Jono likes you, don't try and minimize it. And then she said, well, I said he had a crush. Well, if you knew he had a crush, why were you texting him? You had a crush on him as well. And for Jono to then come back with, oh, you know, I have to thank you, Ben, because you made a mistake, you know, your loss is my gain, and it's like... Well, let's see how long that lasts. Let's see how long that lasts. And let's see how much bragging you'll be doing when it all falls apart. Because this house is not built on a solid foundation. As much as you want to play it up, as much as you want to tell everybody that you're happy, I can't wait for them to split. I am going to be here doing a review on their relationship. I'm going to research it if I need to. Am I the only one who noticed the trend? Because it seemed like every time someone's tried to question the relationship between Ellie and Jono, Jono went hard at them. When it was uh, Lauren, he told her, you know, you're a, you called me a dog. You're the most evil person I know. You are very malicious. You're very this and that. And then when it came to Ben, he told Ben that, you know, you're an idiot. You didn't appreciate the woman you were matched with. Your loss is my gain. And when Sarah tried to speak up, then he told her, your husband doesn't love you. He never loved you. He would have said no to you, but you sort of, he sort of implied that Sarah bamboozled um, him into saying yes on, you know, final vows. And it's like, if you're that strong and confident in your relationship, why are you giving opinions about other people's relationships? Why not focus on your own and, you know, gloat about your relationship to whoever's willing to listen? your relationship is weak. If you look at their body language as well, I kept looking and then I picked up on it. When Jono and Ellie are looking at each other, he's hugging her, he's kissing her, he's got a smile on his face. And then as soon as he turns away, the mask sort of falls off and he's back to this, you know, very angry sort of um, mean-spirited face that he has on him. And it's like, did they say they're going to play up their relationship as much as possible to spite everybody else? Or are they genuinely in love and they have so much disdain for everybody else? I don't get that. I think, yes, Sarah and Tim, that connection should not have continued because I think they should have said no the moment the cheating scandal came up because something is not right for me about Sarah and Tim. Every time they say they're doing very well, someone has to bring up gossip. When they were doing very well during the experiment, you had Jaden and Eden come up and say Sarah cheated. Now they're doing very well. You have Jono come up and say that, you know, um, Tim really didn't want to say yes to you on final vows. He felt, you know, you was pushed into that decision and it's like what is it about their connection what is it i understand with tori and jack you can actually pick apart the things that he personally did but then with sarah and tim it's sort of implied and it's a sort of secondhand gossip there's no sort of facts to it it's just even the text messages with the ex we didn't get to see them we didn't get to see the the text messages to eden so it's very he said she said and sarah i think was playing it up i think sarah is on, is on this sort of revamp her image tour and she's going to say and do anything to save herself and if tim is the one who's going to take the blame for the breakdown of their relationship she'd rather things go that way than for her to be you know the villain i think this is what she's after and to see the malicious faces on ellie and jono's faces even ellie saying oh you know jono um don't tell him any secret because he knows everything he knows and it's like so you think this is the best you could do are you sure the experts are not impressed i can't wait for the final couch ceremonies because I want to hear what the experts are going to say. I have a feeling it's going to be hot. I have a feeling it's going to be hot for Jono and Ellie. So I can't wait for that. The fact that they keep bragging about how they're the best person ever. And it's like, mm, 
it's too much. It's too much. You're being too defensive about this relationship. It makes me question whether it's genuine or whether you're going to do it for the opportunities or for the ability to spite the people that you dislike or the people that disapprove of your relationship. They're giving me Jack and Tori, as I've said, but 2.0 version, a 2.0 version. So I can't wait for, you know, the couch to hear what the experts actually say, because you can see that the experts are not happy with them as a couple because they feel like they were betrayed. They were lied to by Jono in regards to, uh, you know, the situation with his text messages with Ellie and also in regards to his relationship with, with Lauren. So I can't wait for that. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode um, 36. Bye guys.